Ladies and gentlemen, there's a really interesting Washington Examiner article. Trump reaffirms loyalty to GOP while calling for critics to be excommunicated. Democrats don't have this problem. They don't have the equivalent of Mitt Romney, Ben Sass, Lisa Murkowski, Susan Collins, uh, Kinzinger, Cheney, um, wh who else? Um, Justin Amash. They don't have like seven senators and probably about 20 something or 30, maybe 20 something, never Trumpers. In, in, the, in the House of Representatives, or the equivalent of in the House of Representatives. Everyone walks in lockstep. There is absolute obedience and allegiance within the Democratic Party. It's a finely tuned political machine since the days of Tammany Hall. It is, they've, they've perfected the art of legal graft. If you have a controversy, my God, it... I mean, it took the New York governor, it took thousands upon thousands of lives for New Yorkers to say enough already. And a very courageous Democrat, Ron Kim, going after New York's governor, finally. But it takes that kind of catastrophic disaster for Democrats to actually turn and, and want accountability. The interesting thing about people who oppose President Trump within the Republican Party is that if you go to 538's tracking Congress in the age of Trump, they're all voting over 90% in line with the 45th president. 90% of the time, the majority of these um, people who claim to oppose Trump, to uphold democracy... It's all public relations. They vote in line 90%. Kinzinger, Cheney, over 90%. McConnell ha has had issues with Trump, over 90%. Cassidy, 90%. And I think even Ben Sass was like 80-something percent. And then you get Mitt Romney, that was like 75% in line with Trump. So the vast majority of the time, even Mitt Romney is voting alongside President Trump. And... And there were even votes to curtail Trump's ability to wage a certain foreign policy tactic that President Biden just engaged in, which was horrendous. See, President Trump, it didn't take a month. It took a month for Biden to show who he is. So President Biden showed who he is, which is exactly why I voted for President Trump. Trump wants to remove our presence in never-ending counterinsurgency conflicts. But Biden wants to defend a presence we shouldn't even have in a region of the world we should have left 20 years ago. But we owe the men and women of, of the United States, uh, we, we owe our soldiers better. It is a moral dilemma we face that we are in these never-ending quagmires. And if you voted for Biden... You voted for you. You want to continue these never-ending quagmires. That's on you. I voted to end those, um, those, 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 the the horrible foreign policy that has been counterproductive for two decades and a failure for two decades, perpetuated by the Bush, Cheney, and Rumsfeld uh, era and then continued by President Obama, who was supposed to undo everything that Bush uh, did. Instead, he added on. The region, the, the, the exact country that Biden sent a message to, President Obama sent the, us there, and he won the Nobel Peace Prize. But hit subscribe to this channel right now. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for getting my last segment on John Durham um, going. Thank you. Check out that segment. I appreciate your support. It's March. Let's get things ramped up. If you want to support my voice long term, my Patreon is below. It's also on hagoodman.com, where you can read my writing there in the Hill Huffington Post Salon, the Jerusalem Post, the Federalist, the Roanoke Times. You can see my debates. Hit subscribe. Trump reaffirms loyalty to GOP while calling for critics to be excommunicated. Now, this is very interesting. Very, very interesting. No doubt he's going to run again in 2024. There's nobody who can come close. 
the way, okay, there's nobody Republicans have that can even come, you can say like, okay, in terms of intellect, in terms of like, like Rand Paul does have a following, but you would have some kind of bizarre, like the Libertarian Party would would try to undermine Rand Paul. I mean, he, Rand Paul, I, the only thing, I, the only person I could think of in t- for 2024, aside from President Trump, would be like a Rand Paul or somebody like Ron DeSantis or, I mean, but but see, again, there's nobody even close. There's nobody who has a populist message. President Trump's populist message is very similar to what Bernie Sanders' popular populist message in 2016 was. That you please quote me on that. They both oppose. They both oppose the Trans-Pacific Partnership. They both are more willing to engage in tariffs. The main thing in terms of foreign policy, they both stated that they want to end regime changes and interventions. The difference between the two, aside from the overlapping um, viewpoints and ideology and policies. It, it, from 2016, Bernie 2020, different story. The, 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 the reason I bring it up is that one is a phony and fake. So Bernie Sanders can't even get Democrats to abide by simple promises like the, the um, stimulus checks. He's there to funnel votes into, I mean, they railroaded him in 2016. He did nothing about it. He's there to, he's to, he's there to funnel votes along with AOC back into the Democratic Party. So people who want Medicare for all will just say, well, you know, at least it's, it's better than Trump. President Trump has a viable, a, 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 we saw it, 75, 74 to 75 million Americans wanted an end to perpetual never-ending never uh, counterinsurgency conflicts. And he wanted to remove our presence from that region of the world. I think, you know, it's funny. People say, oh, you're immoral for voting for Trump. No, in my view, well, I mean, I don't judge. They can do, people can do what they want to do. In my view, you're immoral if you didn't vote for President Trump. Because the biggest dilemma we face, the biggest moral conundrum we face is why we have American, not only American soldiers, the children of veterans serving in the same conflict Serving in the same conflict, ladies and gentlemen. So, I mean, you, you have a situation where, where it's pretty unbelievable. The lack of awareness, the lack of understanding, and the, and the, the inability to, to, to say that, okay, a president can unilaterally engage in foreign policy tactics like Biden just did. So you want somebody who is less likely to get us into a tragedy with with nuclear armed countries in one location in a powder keg. See, there's that's like one issue. Instead of focusing on Russian Facebook ads, maybe you should focus on their jets above Damascus and not call for a no fly zone. But again, Democrats, if it's not on CNN and MSNBC, they don't care about it. If it's not like the, the newest expose in the New York Times and the Washington Post, they don't, they're oblivious to it. Liberal Democrats don't care about never-ending conflict. They don't. They don't. Uh, and in, in, in many cases, they never did. You look at Vietnam, liberal Democrats got us into Vietnam. But President Trump... He has, there's two ways to go. Either a sledgehammer, a bulldozer, um, you know. See, like Nikki Haley today, for example, praised President Trump. He should meet with her, and I think he will. There are certain people that he just is not going to let up on, like the Wyoming representative. Okay, that's, I guess that's, that's okay, but I think that President Trump should, although it's good that he lets people know now, uh, like he always do, like he always did, I think it's 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 good that he continues to kind of say, okay, you know what? If you go after me, it's curtains. That's fine, but he needs to build alliances. He needs to in, he needs to incentivize people. He needs to he needs to create incentives to to for 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 people on the fence to fully adopt or to fully um, back him and support him, despite the negative media coverage that comes with this. You got to understand. Josh Hawley, Ted Cruz, when people support President Trump, 
Madison Cawthorn they're going after now. I mean, this man is like, this man is a heroic individual. Early 20s, horrendous car accident, picked his life up. And one publication that published the Steele dossier, we spoke to 36 people who, who said that he did this. Well, did you speak to 36 people who said the governor of New York did X, Y, Z? Like, all, like I'm, he's accused now of so. Did you speak to the Lincoln Project? People who know the Lincoln Project? You couldn't find 36 people who know the Lincoln Project? Weaver or Cuomo in New York? You couldn't find 36 to 40 people? But you found 36 people who said this person's a bad person. No, no evidence of, of, of a criminal, of a complaint on campus. No evidence of, of a charge or indictment. No DUI like, like, a, like, a, like a rock musician, an old rock musician that had that, that absurd commercial we won't get into. They only go after, they, they go after with a vengeance. We spoke to 36 people who know, and, and those 36 people, they corroborate all the hearsay and gossip. It took them two, it took them a full year to finally realize that New York's governor was an unmitigated disaster. And I've been talking about that for a, a year. The man is the worst example of leadership you could ever, if they, he wrote a book. The man wrote a book on leadership. This is how clueless Democrats are. And many Democrats and liberals. But that's what I'm saying. You can actually go and write a book. You'll get that book deal. Legal graft. You'll get that book deal. You'll get speaking engagements. You'll get positive coverage. You'll get a super PAC. And you'll have access. The Lincoln Project got $90 million from good liberal Democrats. The same Bush, Cheney, and Rumsfeld people that the liberal, same liberal Democrats opposed at one point. The whole thing is a racket. But the money-making racket is more lucrative for Democrats than it is, uh, definitely more lucrative than it is for Trump Republicans. But for never Trumpers, it's almost as lucrative. So you have to, like, President Trump has to realize this, and I'm not saying, like, there has to be either, a like, there should be speaking engagements within, there should be, like, a network of speaking engagements within, um, the Republican Party, like or like conservative publishing companies that publish the viewpoint of a person like Josh Hawley. I'm not like there's no framework for this, or there's no like roadmap or rubric or whatever. There needs to like President Trump should understand. One one of the one of the um, the the obstacles he faced throughout his presidency, one of the obstacles he faced throughout his presidency was the fact that he had to contend with Republicans who just wanted him out of the way. He just th th these are Republicans that wanted him out of the way. They they didn't want him. They didn't want him to be president. And it was the Republicans that did like that that hurt President Trump the most. It was the Republicans that Im investigated him based on nonsense. It was the Republicans that um sided with Democrats on Trump Russia and even on both impeachments to an extent. He needs to make sure that Republicans in general have incentive, not just in terms of ideology, because for a lot of people, it's, that's not going to be the case. Now, he can wait till 2022 and still remain, uh, you know, still, still engage in the same tactics. Um, he can wait until 2022, still engage in, in the same type of political tactics, and then say, look, you're primaried out. But then you're still going to get the, the stragglers, you're still going to get people like who could who could be a political liability. What would be interesting, ladies and gentlemen, would be for a Republican Party not just to fully embrace President Trump in terms of a populist message, for example, removing our presence from a region of the world we shouldn't be in, 
This is much more important than climate change. Climate change is extremely important. Yes, it, it is It is an uh, existential issue. It is an existential issue. However, putting nuclear-armed countries in one location within a powder keg uh, can, can speed up the demise of the planet exponentially. Okay? The doomsday clock, that was meant to to address that issue. They just recently added climate change. But what President Trump needs to do when he's going after and trying to remove, you know, Kinzinger, Cheney, uh, Ben Sass, and Mitt Romney, or, or at least try to, like, marginalize them, he can't just simply say, okay, these people are bad. They side with Democrats. He, that's not, that's not the, that's not the only, that's not the only thing that, 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 sh- that that's not the only tactic that he should engage in. That is not the only tactic he should engage in. He should build alliances, but he should also make some kind of, I, I don't know if it's an economic incentive. I'm not saying that he there should be an economic incentive that he needs to create, but there needs to be a framework that works in from a political sense. There's like, you cannot... Like, you cannot, if, if media, Hollywood, late night, every single, Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Fallon, uh, Trevor Noah, Stephen Colbert, like, you know, another, what's his, another, the chubby guy, I forgot his name. Every single person is leveled against Trump and anyone who supports President Trump, and they don't even care about 74 million Americans. Like, half the country, virtually half the country that voted Virtually half the country is not being represented or even acknowledged to exist by late night you can't, or by Hollywood. You can't even enjoy, or by the music industry. You can't even enjoy yourself without being reminded of how horrendous your decision was. And this, by the way, we've already seen the alternative to Trump. We've already seen President Biden. This is turning out to be not just not just a catastrophe, but this is turning out to be confirmation that their temper tantrum for four years pertaining to lofty ideals like uh, the, the democracy and uh, the the republic and the constitution and all you know they democracy is, was turned into and is still ter- being turned into a euphemism for the Democratic Party. Oh, he's going to tarnish democracy. He's going to tarnish. The, he's going to harm the Democratic Party. That's what that's what you really mean. So, we've seen, like, there's nothing that's taking place now in the past month that President Trump, well, I should say, all the good things, that's from Trump's administration. All the negative things, that's, by President Biden owns that. And this is just a month. We, in just one month of governing, just one month, they've engaged in a horrendous military tactic. The Lincoln Project is completely disgraced and radioactive and nobody wants to get within 20 feet of them. You have New York's governor imploding and his true self out in the open as the most inept, incompetent governor we've ever had, probably. One of the, one of the worst. You have other Democratic governors being p- potentially recalled. You have a uh, deputy attorney general, I'm sorry, a deputy uh, uh, press secretary resigning for going after a Politico reporter, and all of these scandals and controversies, they're never sensationalized. And MSNBC today, today, ladies and gentlemen, I'll bring this up, MSNBC today stated, why Democrats need to be realistic about the Trump tax investigation. They're already admitting defeat. They know it's a bunch of nonsense. The IRS had its taxes forever. What do you What do you expect? What do you think? The United States government's going to look at Grandy, like Putin giving him, um, you know, what, Putin and, and Trump having a love child together and then, uh, you know, Putin paying him off and, and it, it runs through his taxes and then, you know, only only uh, Maddow and MSNBC can save us? You think that that's going to happen? These are the night, like, these are the, the fantasies, the tinfoil hat fantasies of the left. They couldn't find anything on Trump. But the truth about them was covered up and lies and fabricated nonsense about Trump was 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 drum up was drummed up give me your thoughts below i just i just hope that president trump 
add something. Like, he can never go back on Twitter. I don't have Twitter. I don't have Facebook. Delete your Twitter account and Facebook account today. But what he needs to do, ladies and gentlemen, is limit his presence on social media because that they can manipulate that. He needs to talk, he needs to get on Joe Rogan, and he needs to get on Tim Pool and Brandon Tatum and others. And he needs to like um he needs to find creative ways to communicate who he is as a human being. While at the same time giving incentives to Republicans to join him and, you know, deal with whatever media consequences. Give me your thoughts below. I'll be back today for the live stream. I have a live stream this evening. I'll be here for the live stream. Thank you.